Twitter folks, welcome to episode 224, the WP Tonic Roundtable. But we haven't got a roundtable because they've all deserted me, folks. It's only my co-host, Kim, that's with me. We're a bit lonely, but it's Labour weekend, folks, and the children have left the school and they're rampant. They've disappeared, folks. So I'm going to let my co-host introduce herself first. Kim, introduce yourself. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's Kim Shivler from WhiteGloveWebTraining.com. And as Jonathan said, it's just the two of us this week. So we've got a special show just for you. It may not be quite as exciting as uh, when we get the whole crew on board, but we still will cover the topics and have a good time. We guarantee you will be entertained. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So let, let's go for it. Let's go for it, Kim. So let's go for the first. Um, we're going to go for our normal news sections. Funny enough, got re- we got three really fantastic news stories. Um, let's go first, which is linked to our heated discussion last week. Um, Matt. Moweg addresses concerns about Gettysburg, confirms new editor to ship with WordPress 5.0. What do you think, Kim? I think it was a great article, both the one the Tavern did and the actual uh, mm. blog that Matt wrote. I think it, it, it really addressed, I think, a lot of the questions people have had, etc. There's still going to be people that don't like it, but... He, he really broke down why he sees the need for it and the different um, target markets, et cetera, that, that this will address. And he also pointed out, I think one of the fears was when he says that, you know, it's going to ship with 5.0, he points out that while we have a timeline, he says that uh, 5.0 won't ship until Gutenberg is ready as opposed to going ahead and pushing the date if it's not ready. And I think that if that is done, then we know that, you know, they're going to be something cohesive about it. I have been, I have installed a test and I have started creating some in-depth tutorials. I'll obviously have to keep them updated because this, you know, this is still beta, but I'm liking it. And I think that onboarding my clientele, which Uh, many of you know, tend to be beginners, I think is going to be easier than I maybe was concerned about initially. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, I was was thinking about the conversation last week and what Matt has said in his own article and the article on the Tavern, actually, Kim. And um, I don't totally agree with Morton about it being revolutionary, um, really changing. It's my, only my opinion, and Malta might be totally right. I don't actually see it as revolutionary. I see it as a necessity to compete um, with um, increasing online platforms that allow an easy editing experience. What, what do you feel about that remark, Kim? Yeah, I actually think, I mean, that's pretty much what Matt's saying. If, if we want to keep growing and continuing to be a platform that we're selling is easy for the end user, not just the developer, these are the steps that need to happen. And again, from playing with it now, I can see, I think I see where it's going. I can definitely see things that I can help my users with that will be a lot easier for them. And to be fair to Moulton, <clears throat> I think he, what you're suggesting that it, um, what, um, what you seem to be suggesting by what Matt has publicly said at the last um, word, word camp US that was held at San Francisco at the old, the old um, um, place, basically. Um, Looking back his notes, he suggests that um, Matt's got an even bigger vision even after that editor, and that's why he's saying that it was um, going to be a revolutionary process because this is like just step one in Matt's overall um, outlook to really change totally the interface of WordPress. Um, we have to see. But uh, as uh, my only concern is... Um, 
and a lot of developers have it, is with the Metabox issue because so much um, functionality in WordPress is built around that. That has extended the platform. And if that's really not dealt with, um, it will cause an enormous amount of pain, won't it, Kim? Absolutely. That I, The two big issues I still see out there that people are, are really talking about that makes sense, and one of them is the Metaboxes. They've been such a part of the software of, of Core for so long, or uh, the support for them has been. And people were pointing out even, even other hooks and things are going to be working differently. So there's a lot that's going to be impacted by this. And I don't really know, you know, how they're going to handle that solution. And I hope they do it elegantly because that could be a big challenge for, for many, you know, people depending on the plugins they're running, et cetera. And then the other is the issue right now with the, um, the React licensing yeah. that, you know, a lot of people, it's WordPress seems to be the only um, large open source person who's kind of not addressing that. And Matt did say in the off, in the, uh, article that 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 is coming they will be addressing it but that is another big potential mm. issue here yeah true uh, mm. i think the other thing um based on our conversation last week and you didn't hear it folks you really want to go to that episode um 222 um and have a listen because it's a great discussion is um I think I think one of the main problems with this whole issue has been communication, hasn't it, Kim? And that's what I meant by my remark that Matt has too many hats on his head at the present moment. It's not his head's big enough not to support all those hats. He's in a, t- a totally different pay scale intellectually than I am. Uh, um, um, he's one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. Um, personally, you can tell that he's in a different all bit in a way um it humbles you um but um he's not superman um either so um having too many hats means that something has to give um there's only so many hours in a day no matter how super intelligent you are and um i think that's shown in a lack of communication um which has changed recently um but i think that was been one of the major problems what do you think about that kim i i definitely think that and and i think um you know that's been what's come out of the last two tavern um the the, the last two tavern articles and, and he actually started jumping in and commenting and and responding to people in the comments and then he wrote this article and i think that I'm so happy that this is happening now. I think if this had happened several months ago, maybe it would have helped mm. us, you know, and look, we know this community. <laughs> There's always going to be people who complain with any change. Yeah, was you um, going to happen? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I, sorry, I'm sorry to butt in, but did you read some of the, <laughs> some of the, uh, um, some of the comments underneath the article on the tavern? Yes. Well, you, you know, it was so banal, some of the comments, weren't they? They really were. Do you, think was, you, know, you just want to slap some of these people around the chops, don't you? Yeah, sometimes, exactly. You know, some of them were very thoughtful and, and you're like, yes, that's something that needs to be considered. And some of them just, it, again, it, and it's not just this community. It's been every technical community I've ever been a part of, right? There are pe- some people who are going to whine about anything. Yeah. So we, I think we cover on to the next, on yeah. to the next story. And um, that's Razon, the WordPress WooCommerce experts. Um, 10 mistakes I made building a WordPress startup. Yes, I've been there. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> done them all uh, i've got the scars and the pay and the empty um bank account to show it uh um, basically what what did you think of this article i think it's a great read for anyone who is considering launching that kind of business whether it's software as a service or really any any productized business you know his points of 
face it, nobody cares. Stop. You Stop. care. Stop. It's your baby, but nobody else really cares. And something like I loved that he, um, when he talked about the technology and how, you know, those of us particularly who are in technology, we get so wrapped up in the tech itself that we sometimes forget that it's really about what the customer needs. The customer wants the solution. They don't care about the bells and whistles. They just want whatever solution it is. And uh, it's a good, yeah. remind, good reminder if you're going to build a product for customers is that, that they care about meeting their needs. It just, just getting uh, a large enough beta um, group that are prepared to invest time in a bit of bait it's you know just even even offering it for free nowadays doesn't really um mean that you're going to get any interest to even try it out um um uh, well and people who will take it serious enough to actually put it through its paces give you the feedback you need you know it's more than just saying yes i'll do it and installing the product <laughs> It's really taking that time to, um, to invest, like you said, and then report back. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yep. Um, I'm just trying to uh, do three things at once, folks. This is why, um, <laughs> this is the problem. Um, <laughs> You can hide it easier when you we have talk, more round can, can you keep talking for a second, actually, about the article a little bit, actually, Kim, because I need to do something. Sure. So the other thing, like really good, and this is some of this stuff is just basic business, but it's something that I find, uh, you know, you guys know I do a lot of work with entrepreneurs on sales and project planning, and it's something I find, you know, he p talks about have 12 months of revenue, you know, give yourself that time. You're not gonna, you can't count on releasing this and making money overnight. Uh, something I would add that I don't remember him having in there that I try to work with my customers on is if possible, pre-sell. Yeah. You know, like when I do a lot of, you know, I do a lot of productization with people where we're going to build a membership or we're going to build a, a series of online courses and a platform. And I try to get them selling those before we're even built because it shows who's interested in what, if they'll buy it. Yeah, that, that, that's a fantastic point. You know, um, I, don't, I can understand why people don't do it. Um, there's a bit of, I wouldn't say legality here, but it's more, oh, how to put it? It, it, it it's, but I suppose it all goes down to the notion of, you know, getting a minimum viable product, mm -hmm. um, you know, really just getting the base, every idea, there should be just a basic idea and it's a bit like wordpress the basic idea which matt stated around what wordpress is is to um to make publishing easy mm -hmm. to demo to democratize publishing uh, um um so at the core of every product there should be a um a viable product idea a, a notion of what what service product and why it should be interested of interest to your target audience. So getting getting a viable pro, minimum viable product and then trying to do some pre sales. Even if you just get two to five pre sales, it kind of proves that there, there's some there's some something that something there basically, isn't it, Kim? Absolutely, and it keeps you from. You know, again, because he is talking about development, one of the tendencies sometimes when we're building or we're developing something, if being build, building it from the developer's perspective doesn't mean that those are the same things that's going to be from the customer's perspective. So getting that MVP out there and finding out what the customers want next, as opposed to taking a lot of time building the features you think they want, only to find out that 
that you just built something nobody wants and spend a lot of time doing it, it, it that doesn't make sense to me in a, from a business standpoint. Yeah, um, it's really easy. Um, it's really easy to um, get carried away with the technology, isn't it? Um, yes. It, that's hard, but it's an area where we're just comfortable in, really, isn't it? Yeah, and he pointed all that out. He, like I said, I think, I think it's a great article. He has very good points. Um, I would like him to hire a proofreader. <laughs> There's a lot of errors in it. They drive me nuts. But um, I'm probably well, so one, of my articles, one of my <laughs> articles. Uh, um, but no, I, I normally when I'm writing something substantial, I do get it proofread. <laughs> yeah. I did notice that, but being that I suffer from... Um, I thought I was going to bring it out, but you did, so that's great. <laughs> so that's released. Be <laughs> yes. Um, on on to the next story then, and that's from a slightly different source. Um, it's from Geek Wire, um, and it's from one of their tech writers. Um, I'm trying to find out quickly who's it from. Um, Jeff, well, it's not Jeff, but <laughs> he definitely did write it. Um, I can't see it. Um, but it's a great article. Why it may be time uh, for Amazon to seriously consider spinning off Amazon Web Services. And it's from Tom Crassis. Crassit. Um, probably, are you going to attempt the name, I Kim? Think- or? Tom Krasit sounds right to me. Yes, yes. I think I didn't do a bad job there. Not bad, was it, for me? Not bad. Um, So what did you think of this article, Kim? It was so funny. I I thought it was a fabulous article. It's honestly not something uh, that was on my mind. But when you read it, it's like, oh, my gosh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's not something I'd been paying attention to that, you know, Amazon being the you know, big, big uh, elephant in the room as far as the retailers goes. And yet, and their competitors, Walmart, et cetera, have been using their, uh, you know, Amazon Web Services. And they're like, wait, we don't want to pay you money to also be our competitor. And like I said, it had not been on my mind. I have my own stuff on my mind. And, uh, but it absolutely made sense. And I think it'll be interesting to see what happens if they do spin it off into something separate uh, that, as he pointed out, Wall Street's been asking them to do for a long time or hoping that they do for a long time because it would also be a, a nice uh, boom for their uh, shareholders. Yeah, I think it was really a, fa- uh, a fascinating article and I brought it because it was slightly outside of the realms of WordPress, but it's linked because so many services... Um, that are offered in the WordPress um, um, environment are based on Amazon, aren't they? Um, From hosting, there's a number of hosting providers that actually use Amazon as um, the the basis of their um, service, don't they? You know, um, it's or or they're using Google. Um, so there's a number. There's a number of third-party plugin um, hybrids have the plugin, and also it's a SaaS, mm-hmm. and they're using AWS as their um, as a platform, aren't they? Um, it touches WordPress quite a lot, doesn't it? It pretty much touches everybody. I mean, I I think they are the biggest provider of that type of web service right now. Uh, The article pointed out, obviously, that Google or or Microsoft could could play heavy, heavy, heavier in that space if they want to. And I see the, like the web host to now, I don't think that they would see Amazon web services staying with Amazon as competition. But I definitely can see the retailers or, uh, you know, them talking about like, for example, um, Hulu and the video providers, you know, seeing Amazon as a direct competitor. So not wanting to, you know, then be their yeah. customer on web services also. And um, 
obviously um, with Amazon, um, with the recent purchase of Whole Foods and their ex- their expan- ex- clear expansion in entertainment, you know, making um, films, making TV series, series mm-hmm. um, or they are inevitably encroaching into um, partners' territory. And it's got to be a con- consequence of... Um, of them just getting larger, basically, yeah, doesn't it? It does. Hey, look, we've got Lee. Hey, we've hey. got another. Yay! Yay! We've got another <laughs> panelist joining us. The panelist. <laughs> <laughs> we have a true. We have a true panel now. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, guys. I I don't know why I didn't notice the time shift. It has shifted slightly, hasn't it? Yeah, about half yeah. an hour. Okay, yeah. sorry. I um, almost didn't notice either, Lee. <laughs> And I'm the so, co-host. I'm not reading the memo, so listen and read your memo. Nobody, no, folks, nobody reads anything what I write. Actually, the panel, the panel, are notorious for not reading anything I write. No. Uh, um, but they were like present early if it was the normal time. Right. That, yeah, is that, that is true. That is right. Thank, but thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, we've been knocking through the. We we're on to the last story, but um, I like your input on quickly on the um. First of all, with the Matt story, um, mm. what did you think of his reply um, to the general criticism that he's been receiving about the project, really? Um, the- yes, okay. So it's made me want to really dig in and understand um, Gutenberg more, especially with regards to the idea of custom data against post types, because that is something that is super important to yeah. most developers everywhere. He said there will be <laughs> legacy support for custom fields. So that sounds good. That offers some assurance that it's not all going to fall apart tomorrow as it were. So that's good. And also they've assured us that Gutenberg and WordPress 5.0 will only go live when it's ready which is unusual because we're so used to that fast turnaround, but it's also good because that at least assures us that it's not going to go, yeah. you know, we're not just going to all have hell in a handbasket uh, when, it, uh, when it all happens. People who use custom, uh, like tiny MCE buttons and that, obviously need to be aware though. So uh, with regards to Gutenberg though, I'm still out with, the, like Megaly out with the jury. I really need to understand custom data yeah. and I feel like nobody is giving any information. So I'm going to have to go and dig dig deep um dig deep so anyone listening if you know of any information let us know at the show we want to know what information there is especially on the data structure because developers need to know and matt's saying oh it's going to be great for the future and it's going to be great for most people but it's still not clear yeah i think yeah i think that's a great point and it is the main concern for you know you know for the larger part of the development community because if that's not handled very well, it will be a bit of a nightmare, won't it? Yeah. I mean, he said he said there'll be support for legacy, so that's good. Um, but also, just by terming it legacy, obviously yeah. means okay. So custom fields are going to go at some point soon. Um, <clears throat> uh, and now the concern is, well, is that in six point oh? <laughs> when is that? How how long have we then got uh, to go ahead and you know? Unless, uh, you know, Advanced Custom Fields invents, you know, the guy who wrote that is Elliot, invents some really amazing way of just having it just one button and it's all changed. So um, quickly on amazing. to on to the next story, Raisin. Ten mistakes I made building a WordPress startup. I don't know if you had time to give that a quick look over. What was your, what's your main thoughts about that? Uh, well, I didn't read the article to be honest because uh, no. I was reading it before the show and then realized I was late. So I was like, oh crap. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, I know most, I could probably rattle off 10 myself. I yeah, I've done them all myself and you've had a go at it as well, haven't you? Startups and sassies. So you've probably done them all yourself as well, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. I feel like I should write that, that same article myself. I mean, a mistake from for most startups would be to assume that plugins are going to be the answer. Um, because that's what I did. I was like selling uh, selling services based on the fact that I thought, oh yeah, this plugin will solve the issue and it wouldn't. And that was mm. awful. So a lack of experience, skill and plugins, you know, reliant on plugins. I don't know if you mentioned that. Was that in there? Yeah, I'll just say interesting. What, what do you mean reliant on plugins? What do you mean by that? Well, a lot of people think, uh, no offense, but there are a lot of WordPress implementers out there. So a lot of people don't actually know how to build plugins, don't know how to actually create features and functionality. So, But they'll put themselves out as a full service agency and say, right, we're a WordPress agency now. 
what's happening back office, however, is an over reliance on using plugins to try and do as oh. much as they can without any actual programming experience. And you know, so they'll assume, and I did the same thing. I assumed that the plugins I was choosing would meet the client's expectation. Right. Um, thankfully, I had the you know the know how how to change stuff in hindsight, but it was still a huge mistake. Uh, and there's a lot of agencies that I deal with nowadays that have operated under that assumption and then eventually had to get someone like me in to actually right. build stuff for them so oh great were... thanks for clearing that um and the last story um around amazon and aws and it really might be a good idea to break it up from amazon the parent company really um that might be a good idea any quick thoughts about that they um, well, it would be great if they had a dedicated team to it. It's a freaking amazing platform, to be honest. So, uh, and I said freaking for anyone who thought I just swore. Um, and uh, yes, I, I think it could do with uh, being split out and having a dedicated team on it. Amazon are still going to own it in the long run, aren't they? All I care is as long as my parcels arrive next day still, then... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what we all care about? <laughs> then I don't care what they do with the. the uh, I always, I always think when a company like when when something as big as Amazon Services, it, you know, gets that big, I think it needs to have a dedicated team and its own business and its own interests and investments from other parties and that because Amazon is huge and does pretty much everything. I mean, it does groceries for Pete's sake now as well through Whole Foods. Well, domination. You know what I mean? So yes, I think it's a good idea. Actually, you can it's see him with the white cat, can't you? You can actually mm. see him, you know, in his, in his big chair with the white cat. He's bold as well. He's, bold. He's, he's a typical Bond villain he's tem- now, isn't he? temporarily the richest man in the world for about he five is. minutes. That was interesting. Yeah. It, well, you know, I wonder if uh, Fleming would ever, you know, it, is, you know, it wouldn't be Spectre, it would be Amazon. That's... <laughs> 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 doesn't really but it's not really the same it's it's probably in some ways even more sinister but it's yeah. kind of wetty wetty sinister isn't it you know <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just not it's, but, it's weird isn't it i i'm i mean i'm kind of waiting for this whole bubble to burst to be honest like y- we are all old enough in this room right now to remember the first dot-com blow up yeah and oh yeah now, now companies oh, seem yeah. to you know, companies seem to be, it seems to be happening again. I mean, it's kind of off topic. Amazon's huge. And I mean, they've been very strategic and I like the way they've done it. Well, actually, I don't like some of the way, some of the things they do are just plain evil. But anyway, forget about that. But uh, disclaimer, that's my opinion and does not represent Amazon at all. Um, <laughs> don't want to get sued. Um, <laughs> oh, crap. Well, you're it, fi- you're but- finished anyway. <laughs> you're marked. <laughs> you're marked. I always have strong opinions, but what what I mean, and I'll shut up in a minute. Sorry, but uh, you know, like you've got Snapchat being, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of valued at this huge amount of money as well, and all these different businesses. And I just feel like it's all going to blow up at some point. But companies who have been quite strategic, like uh, Amazon and Facebook, I think, will still hang in there and Google. But uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit worried about everything else that's going on, to be honest. I think you're right. I think we are approaching that. In fact, maybe that should be one of our roundtable discussions coming up because it really, I, I'm with you. And I mean, yeah, I was, I, was in a, I, I was in Asia when the first bubble burst and I got home to, got back to Texas and like three quarter of my friends had been laid off yeah, so far. in like a four day period. You know? <laughs> so I think you, we are going back to that with some of these you know, like you said, yes, the big strategic players are safe, but it's you're getting all these pop ups that are being valued at crazy numbers, and you just have to wonder how long we can handle that. Well, funny enough, just to finish off, um, it's L, there's a, um, a YouTube channel and it's called L2, um, L2, and um, the guy Armstrong, he's an analyzer and he kind of, um, he was doing, um, he's also a professor of, uh, of business as well when he's running his own companies. And he does um, analysation of digital companies. And he was like, he, there's a real, uh, he put some data, really emphasises what Lee's just said, um, but he puts it in data terms, is that basically mo- most companies in, in the top 500 haven't, really made any 
sizable changes in profit for the past five years. Mm. It's the top 20 companies. It's a, top, it's a winner take all economy, and um, the top 20 companies have just been taking market share from their competitors because if you take inflation in and a growth rate of around 5%, um, there really hasn't been any real growth. That's his argument. Mm. Um, so basically, these top Facebook, Amazon, um, they've just been taking market share from competitors in different um, sectors. And, um, yeah, I thought that was really interesting, his, his analysation of it's, that. It's almost like it is actually 1984. <laughs> <laughs> Big brother. You've got these top companies you know apple who did not want to be the perceived 1984 have become it as a, as amazon and that like there's this few small con- companies that are like countries that yeah. essentially own us that's kind of scary isn't it we've kind of really digressed haven't we we have really <laughs> yeah. we've got, we've there's a few people weeping right now at the state we've got of totally the off god but who cares <laughs> we, you literally turned up all the other children uh couldn't even be bothered to turn up our um, our, um um, but it's like it's, um, it's like it probably doesn't mean too much to you, Lee. But it's Labour Weekend, which means um, Americans get their their most Americans get their Monday off. Yeah, and, no, uh, I'm aware of it. <coughs> they, they, we, we've made just, our plans around it. <laughs> Are you still just, here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. So um, we've had a good discussion on three pretty good news stories, folks. We're going to take our break. We're going to be coming back and we're going to be talking about our main topic, how to choose the right theme for that project. Be back in a few seconds, folks. We're coming back. We've had, uh, we've had a good discussion, even though the panel's a bit limited this week, but um, Lee arrived and it all got a bit more fun actually, but me and Kim were trying, weren't we? But um Lee kind of um, juiced us up a bit, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, um, so we're going to our main topic, which is choosing that f- exclusive, perfect theme for your project. And uh, um, I'm just going to throw off to Lee. I've done it so far since he's been on the show. I'm just going to throw <laughs> it over to Lee and go. Um, have you got any quick insights about people? You know, because obviously you could say you should just go for a totally custom design. And yeah, that is the ultimate solution to every problem. I would totally agree. But we live in the world, the world world to some extent. Got any tips apart from that around choosing the right theme? Yes, I always have tips. Um, I'm a big believer in themes still. And uh, the reason for that is, is there are a lot of businesses that need to validate a business idea. You need to be able to validate that what you have is going to sell and you don't want to invest in a custom theme build. That totally makes sense. So you're not going to kind of spend 10, 20 grand with a, an agency to build something from scratch. You're going to maybe spend a grand, two grand on having someone help implement some sort of WordPress solution. Um, so uh, that's great. The only downside is, is it's a crowded market. There are a hell of a lot of themes out there. Um, and you've got these market leaders like uh, Aveda or Avada, or however the heck you say it. Um, and they've, they've all been made to try and be all things to all men and women. The problem with that is that means that they're complicated um, if you don't really know how to use it and can, can be bloated as well if you're trying to do too much with it. So um, I guess for me, I've kind of found the happy medium. So for the sites that I need to do quick validation builds on, um, I'll actually use just I, I, all I need nowadays is the beaver builder theme. Uh, so it's the beaver builder theme, the beaver, um, I can never say this, the beaver builder themer. Uh, beaver builder themer, beaver builder <laughs> themer. You if you say it enough, <laughs> it just comes out, doesn't it? But it is pretty. I wish they changed that flipping name. Anyway, yeah. um, <clears throat> so, you know, that plugin and obviously beaver builder itself, um, because I can do you design. think? Do you think they um, named it after they had a few scotches that one evening after long day I think it was a bet, and I think they lost. Um, All right. Yeah. Um, well, because with that, you can design the header, you can design the footer, you can uh, control the loops. Very much similar aspect to I think. Um, What's a loop? 
Uh, well, loop? Data, what's, a, uh, what's a loop? Data loop. Okay, so for people who don't know what a loop is, it's it's where you look at a post list and you're looping through that data. So it'll show you the f the most recent post, and then it'll loop through your design, as it were, and then show the next post in the exact same way, and the next post after that. It's like looping through data. Um, but you can design all that just like you could with the Genesis, and I think Genesis has got a few tools as well. Beautiful thing about Beaver Builder again is it's just all visual. So we've kind of gone off track now. We used to like go and buy themes and now we just use the one theme uh, there's another one as well we use it's the page builder framework um by my mate david and um, i actually did a podcast with him this week so that's live this week uh, where he's made a theme that actually works with beaver builder and elementor and a few other oh. uh, visual builders as well and again gives you that ability to design headers footers and and all that <coughs> stuff um so um it's kind of uh, i kind of feel like that uh, the the big bulky themes eventually are going to become a thing of the past because these frameworks make it very easy um the only th skill that most people might be missing is the design aspect which will mean people will tend to go for uh themes that have a pre-built design um in them whereas if you're going with beaver builder and like a, a framework theme you're kind of on your own you've got to create some sort of design although well, that... you can copy <laughs> you can copy things with beaver builder because it's that damn easy so okay i mate. well Mm. I don't know what to say about, you know, I follow everything you say. Um, the only thing is we tend to, you know, you're, you're a developer, but you're also a marketer and you also got eye for design. I can tell that you got eye, eye for design. Um, that's enough. I think your probably your head's going to explode now, actually, but uh, I think that's enough. Actually, great words from Lee Jackson. <laughs> but he's a great man, actually. Uh, um, um, but a lot of people don't have that. You know, I, I've had people come to me and they've knocked something or they show me something and it's the most dog-ugly bit of rubbish that I've ever seen in my life. And they really can't see it. They honestly can't see that it's horrendous. And I, I don't classify my... Um, I have design ability and if i had worked on it i probably i could have become a graphic designer or i think i would like to kid myself i could become a graphic designer um you can be anything you want to be if you just believe exactly okay. exactly uh just believe believe uh um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> kim's killing herself she's literally killing herself believe uh um but uh, um, let's get back on subject, for God's sake. Uh, um, so, um, but a lot of people just just don't have that that design chops, do they? You know, they just can't even see that it's dog ugly. So that's where theme. And also, I just don't. I think the kind of um, the real hard do DIY types want you know to move everything around and you know, look at every element of it. But I think most people in the small community just want to get a website up. And But I don't know. What do you think, Kim? Where do you go with this? Or do you think all these small business DIYs really want to muck around with every element and move it all around and blah, blah, blah? I, I would say for my customers, it's kind of half and half. A lot of them do like mucking around with it. And um, why? I, but, and I'm why? The same. why, Kim? Why? <laughs> And I'm the same as Lee, though. I just push everybody now into the the Beaver Builder because, I, you know, I, I, you know, you said I wanted to kill. I was acting. I was killing myself. I did a, a couple of Avada projects once upon a time, and boy, you want to talk about wanting oh, wow. to kill yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, and so now it's like, yeah, if you want to do like like Lee said, anything and do it pretty easy. And I know it validates because one of the problems I find with my do-it-yourselfers, because the do-it-yourselfers are my target audience, they go and they find something in the repository and they like the way it looks, but they have no concept of whether or not the HTML is any type of quality. Mm. So they come to me later on, or maybe they did it by themselves before they're working with me. And you get these themes that have, you know, 900 validation errors that have uh, every single uh, site, the site 
title is an H1 on every single page. So you've either got that as the H1 or sometimes they've got three H1s on a page. And, you know, these sites are just, just a real nightmare. And that's why I'm, I'm the same. I, I can send them to the Beaver Builder. I know they can copy another one, you know, find that site that you like the look of and you can make it pretty easy in, in the Beaver Builder um, theme if you use the theme and the plugin together. So you, Jonathan, you, Jonathan, I've got a question. I, I guess yeah, this, this is quite a broad question. Oh, yeah. so, I'm, so a, I, I'm not I noted a, for my broad <laughs> questions, am I? I'm not noted <laughs> for those not. at all, Lee, am I? Definitely not. But yeah. I've attacked this as, uh, you know, as an agency wanting to, because so, obviously my mindset is I'm an, I'm an agency and I deal with agencies all the time. So well, you're the agency build, for the agency, aren't you? This is true. Thank you for the advertisement, angle.com. <laughs> um, and... Uh, <laughs> So, no, you're sponsored, but no, it's not sponsored by, I can't afford it. Um, well, you but, do come on the show, so I think I should push your business, really. You, you do contribute a lot to the show, so I think I've got the obligation to push it. Yeah, um, yeah. No, no, no. So, so I've approached it that way, and, and it's, you know, Beaver Builder uh, for me and Kim as agencies or as small agencies, you know, it's, it's perfect solution for the quick validation websites. I think both of us would recommend you know, custom code, you know, when, when so, you know, so, so it's kind of, it's kind of like three categories, isn't there? There's, there's agencies who want to help other people get a quick validated website. So I think we're both recommending Beaver Builder. There's the bigger agencies working on big projects. That's definitely a custom build because you know, bigger sites just need lots of care and love. And then you've got um, kind of a whole group of businesses who want to do it themselves. And at that point, I don't know what to suggest because there is just so many, there are so many themes out there. Me and Kim know Beaver Builder like the back of our hands. Perhaps a DIY business would just fall apart looking at Beaver Builder trying to work out what the hell to do, especially when it comes to the fact, like you said, there is no, a lot of people don't have a design experience um, and they're quite happy to have awful looking websites up there because they don't have the eye for the design or understand that kind of level of quality. Uh, so at that point, <clears throat> if we're going to talk to that group of people, um, then... I, I think my advice would be to, if you're going to do a DIY, still get the advice of someone in the WordPress know before you pick your theme. So call me or Kim or Jonathan, and we'll give you a, a checklist of questions to say, all right, so look at this theme, have a look at the demo, do a little W3C test. Does that demo have a million errors in it? How quick does the demo load? Have a look at the support on, um, on theme forest, for example, if you're on there. You know, how quickly does, do they answer in the comments for the support? How many stars has it got? How many purchases has it got? Because all of those help build a picture of the quality of the product. Um, what sort of feedback are people giving in the reviews? Like, is it slow or anything else like that? So that's kind of the only advice I think we could really give for those sorts of DIYers. Hey. Yeah, I think I, I really think that's fantastic, Lee, because I, I really think I was thinking a lot before about the topic and that's what I was going to say for once. And... Um, and um, it's still the Wild West when it comes to all this, folks, because um, let's say you're, you're a small business owner. And you, I, I think you still are best looking at a pre-made theme fundamentally. And I think you'll be better off looking at themes that have been designed for your particular niche of business. So um, look at, look at the competition and, and go and do a general look on the internet uh, and try and avoid these. See, I, I haven't got the total hate for theme forests that a lot, some people in the WordPress community have in their hearts yeah. for it. Um, but on the other hand, the kind of Swiss army knife themes that are so are some of the most popular in theme forest are nightmares because so, i'll give you an example i had a client that just recently come on board and um they got a, a rather reasonably looking decent looking website it was actually designed by an agency but they're using one they used one of these swiss army knife themes mm -hmm. and almost every page literally almost takes four seconds to load mm -hmm. um literally you know, is a dog. It's like tree called going through the internet. And every script under known to man has been loaded into this this monstrous pile of um coded nonsense. 
and they they originally wanted us to tweak you know do something about it and i said well yeah we we can waste a lot of time on doing this or but the real solution is to find either find a better theme and we can help you move it and tweak it or you can go for a custom and we can send you to some people that do a lovely custom theme uh, um it's your I mean, choice and i'm with you there uh, on the theme forest thing i i don't hate it no but i think you have to be careful i've just popped yeah. a link in in the panelists a conversation oh, well, i interviewed this guy he is he's behind project huddle um andre but he also developed a whole load of themes over many years on theme forest and they are a good example of good quality themes i've used three of them in live sites um over the last five years they lightweight yeah. they're prescriptive so you can't do everything in them but they just do the job that you need to do and i think that's a really good example of what you're talking about and then you've also got the guys who are making a say a restaurant theme or a bed and breakfast theme or and just they have the features there that you need test them in the demo and if that's enough to get you online live and validated, boom. And, yeah. and probably some, if there's some minor things that you want changing, you'll probably be able to use a, 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 um, a page builder or get it customized by somebody, won't you, Lee? Um, um, but is, what's, is the Swiss Army knife um, themes that literally say they can do everything and you know, load literally everything. Because when I looked at how many scripts were being loaded into almost every page, it was mind-bending. Uh, it was really... Um, um, but is there any any other way? Can you... Because basically, I just advise people just to do the basics when it comes to something like Theme Forest. Mm -hmm. Try and find a Pacific theme that matches up with your business requirement and or is that it all has been it's sold for your particular industry but you know be a little bit careful that you know it could be just rebranded and it could be lips lipstick on a pig basically <laughs> uh um but uh um, but um uh, just be oh god i've just got myself into some trouble here uh um but uh um but um, <laughs> but be a little bit careful. It could be just reskin, rebranded. But you know, has the developers shown? You know, are, are they, you know, shown through document documentation, mm -hmm. and just the you know, got any prior history of building sites for your particular industry, mm -hmm. and then um, you know, do read the reviews. <laughs> um you know do spend a bit of time reading the reviews and the comments mm. and um ma send them a pre-sales question um if they can't answer your pre-sales question how do you think they're going to deal with your um technical question <laughs> if they can't even answer your pre so just basic idea. stuff like that what do you reckon kim well the, i definitely reckon that and i've got the link so we can put that in the share notes of the one you were talking about, Lee. The other thing you have to be really careful about with Theme Forest is it's not just the themes themselves. A lot of them, part of why they're, uh, how they're accomplishing being this Swiss Army knife is they're packaging in like five, six, seven pl plugins. And that becomes a problem because you can't always get updates. That's where we've seen some of the big security issues come in when a plugin had a security breach and then that theme had uh, a license for updating it. And that's been a real problem. So that's, that's why I tend to stay away from the theme forest themes. And I absolutely agree as you grow, hire a real agency to do it, you know, go to Lee and hire him to do that that big theme for you but my you know my do-it-yourselfers uh because i'm not an agency um my do-it-yourselfers we actually do tend to focus on a couple of themes beaver is one of them because they can show me a theme on theme, theme forest and we work together to make it look like that but i know that i trust what's behind the scenes and that's why a lot of times i will I will work with them. Maybe it wouldn't be something I would just send them a link to, but because we're going to do it together to get the look they want, then I know that I can trust the theme behind it. 
Kim, you you are there for an agency, as in you offer consultancy, which is exactly what <laughs> I'm encouraging people to do. If you're gonna <laughs> do a WordPress theme DIYer, then get someone like Kim to give you the advice because that's what people need. They can't. I think trying to do it blind on your own and reading blogs yeah. it's just going to become a nightmare. Thank yeah, you. I think yes. I think I think so that I think was a great just shouted each of the services out here, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have. It's been a real yeah. But there we go. Uh, and then um, maintenance WP tonic. Right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be amazed what we get involved with Lee. you know i actually i really do want to keep to the maintenance side of that that mm -hmm. model but yeah. i kind of get sucked into so many other different areas um it's quite an inquisitive mind that's why well no it's just the insistence of the client you know yeah. um you know that we get kind of sucked into other areas um but the actual, I wanted to keep it simple and focused, mm. um, you know, because things can, agency, running a digital agency, there's so many different hats you've got to wear, aren't you? Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, so I think, I think I've been a little bit, I think what I've got gathered so far from this conversation is because of the light beaver build and the other page builders, and that we've got some effective ones that actually do a reasonable job, mm. and with the with their theme builder, um, especially the beaver builder, um, it's really changing the landscape of choices available mm. to people. Um, so, what was the reality eighteen months ago is no longer um, so clear cut, is it? That, uh, that's what I think we can go for so far from this conversation, or am I talking nonsense, Lee? Hmm. I don't think you're talking nonsense. <laughs> I'm just, you've just got me down a rabbit hole of, of visual composer. You, said, <laughs> you, were, you were saying that we've now got a solution that actually works, and then I've just remembered visual composer. Well, yeah, what exactly. Well, saying and how that fusion. Works. Yeah, fusion. which yeah, which and that that's the one of the the elements that has been built in and um, into these themes. And then again, because it's not licensed necessarily, it's just been thrown in. That's then caused you know these problems when there's a security vulnerability. So I'm kind of not even answering your question. It's just all hit me as like a big brick going, oh my gosh, this feels like kind of that kind of setup has been partly responsible for the bad name that WordPress has gotten over the years. And, and then I started feeling angry and then I phased out. Exactly. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, but I can understand it because it, there's, it, it's, it's a shame how it kind of all worked out really, but it is what it, it was like. My, it's, very similar to the situation around hosting because mm. um, a lot of people bitch about certain hosting providers and certain environments in the WordPress community. They make it a hobby um, and I've been part of it, but on reflection, um, it, it was, it was denying market reality because a, a lot of, a lot of what happens is driven by the market, driven mm. by, um, forces that seem to have a life of their own, really. And right. um, what happened to WordPress um, around certain marketplaces and about what themes became really popular in those seemed to have a driving force of its own that was driven by its consumers who, you know, bought hundreds of thousands of of these themes didn't they um so just to recap folks um you know i think you you got more choice now that's the basic fact you, um i think you know i think hiring a wordpress consultant developer who um you know try and find somebody that obviously has got a passion for wordpress that's part goes to word meetups goes to word camps um that's been around more than like a year, that's been around a couple of years, um, and hire, hire them or her to give you some advice. Um, it's really easy to go. Um, you've got more, um, one of the great things now is um, you've got more choice uh, about getting a semi-custom look 
at a realistic price that you probably could afford than you did about 18 months ago. So that side of things, you've probably got some better choices than having to buy one of the Swiss Army knife themes that um, probably won't serve you that well when it especially on the mobile side, which is becoming more and more important around speed, security, other sectors that probably won't help your business. So I would advise you to avoid those. Um, if you're going to go down the traditional theme is like look at um, one of the theme producers that um lead recently interviewed and we have a link to that in the show notes somebody that's making pacific themes um and putting their heart into it that, that doesn't have all these um, swiss army knife functionality but it's been optimized and um and then you could get it customized you know you just got to do a little bit more investigation. So I've been waffling on now, Lee. You got any final comments before we um, end the show, basically? Around. Well, any final words? Oh, okay. Uh, Around like, the topic of this is like selecting the right. Style, isn't it? Take care of yourselves. <laughs> um, is he still on? He's not, yeah. is he? Is he? I think, he's, I, think he, okay. I think he's somewhere. He's somewhere. He's croaking on here. Yeah. Ger- geriatric Springer. That's what it is now. Yeah. That's what that's been, <laughs> That was me. That's pretty quick for me, though. Um, yes, the, the fi- I, I guess the final, the final word. I think to sum up this entire episode as well. Please a, do. Please do. Please do. <laughs> in a nutshell, is if you're listening and you don't necessarily have the skill and experience to select the correct theme and to put it all together without spending hours and hours and hours and hours on it, then your time is valuable. Therefore, it is worth spending a little bit of money getting help from a professional who can at least help you select the right theme based on your requirements and even point you in the right direction for implementation. And that way you still control the budget. If you're an agency doing some sort of validation with a client and you can get yourself into a framework like Viva Builder, Viva Thema or Elementor with Anywhere Elementor and all those other plugins, then and you're doing validation, then go down that line. And as an agency, learn it like crazy like everyone in my business knows beaver builder like everything about beaver builder uh, insane we we've done so many projects now we've just it's it's in our blood um and and that's what i recommend so we can do validation projects and then obviously for the bigger agencies which probably wouldn't even recommend touching any sort of frameworks because when you're dealing with a big client they're going to need proper custom work and you need to start right from the beginning with here are your requirements and let's build a a full project scope, which we also do as well. And at that point we avoid any frameworks and we're building everything from scratch. Although we will still use things like page builders of some sort to allow them to drop specific modules that we will allow them to in certain places, just to give a little bit of flexibility. Um, So that's kind of your three, I think that's your three areas and that's my sum up. So take care of yourselves and each other. (laughs) What, What, any last thoughts Kim about what we've been discussing? (laughs) <laughs> He's gonna play it up so <laughs> please got me cracking up too much. <laughs> Believe. 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 No, I, 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 I loved what uh, Lee, your summation was perfect. Yeah, you know, if you are not if you don't have an eye for it or or you're not sure, go ahead and spend a little bit of money and get some help. And uh <laughs> no, Jonathan, stop. <laughs> no, he's got me. <laughs> okay, right. this, this is so, a show. Yeah, it's here? really serious. It's show. A serious show. Um, it's yeah, serious. spend a little bit of money, get some help, and absolutely, if you're a large, you know, you're working on a large project, you've got to have the money to do the custom work, and that's when you really have to go mm-hmm. with someone who knows their stuff, like a Lee, because. There are a lot of people out there hiring themselves as developers that we've kind of mentioned um, mm. don't always really know how to build things from scratch. They're just depending on a plugin or a theme. Power, yeah, power implementers. I would label them as. Yes, yeah. yes. It, look, if, if the person if the person just took my basic course and they're hiring themselves as a developer, don't hire them. Mm. 
I don't actually, uh, and I think that's not a term. I don't think there's anything wrong with that term, is there, Lee? As long as you're up front no. about it. As long as you say it. what you're doing, that's yeah. absolutely fine. And I actively yeah, encourage think... people who have got that experience to go and help people or build sites <laughs> in that manner. But uh, yeah, I think Kim's point is not to, if you are a power implementer, not to put yourself out there as a developer. The only way that would be fine is if you are a power implementer and you have a team of developers who work with you and you can therefore put yourself out there as an agency that does a wide variety of services and you use specific team members for specific parts of that project, then by all means put yourself out as a development agency but if it's just you as a power implementer be honest and and say what you are and actually that's helpful because if you say I mean, they save you a lot of yeah, aggravation will, as when, well it, when, the, when the client then says oh we need it to do this we say yeah but remember you know i'm a wordpress consultant i'm actually not building this site for you i'm consulting on it and you client uh, um, are going to have to find a developer for that of which i can help you do so mm -hmm. you know so if you're a power implementer don't be ashamed of that it's not a negative thing it's only negative when people lie about it, and we find that happens a lot online, and it's quite frustrating and, again, gives other real developers a bad name. Yes. Right. Um, I, I think it's been a good show. We've had a laugh. Um, I've had a laugh. Thanks, Lee, so much for coming on. Um, no you've been funny today. Um, how can people... I, I'm normally funny. It's my... Uh, it's well, my... you are. You're consistent. <laughs> it's disgusting, actually, but um, I, do, I do play up to it. Uh, um... Our, um so, Lee, how can people get hold of you and learn some more of your wisdom? <clears throat> Head on over to WPInnovator.com, which will redirect you to the right site. Um, and also, I do have a YouTube channel. I've just done 31 episodes in 31 days. <laughs> I would love people to watch that <laughs> and actually comment on it because it sometimes feels like you're talking to three or four people, which is fine. I expected that. But it would be nice if you want to head on over to wpinnovator.com forward slash YouTube and come and say hi on the YouTubes because there is some crazy good content on there, including talking about buying a theme. I'm pretty sure like 25 days ago, I think I did one on buying a theme. So there you go. It all must merge into one anyway, wasn't it? I can't remember it? what I've said, to be honest. Uh, uh, <laughs> you need to watch your own videos. Really. I well, I'm coming up with video ideas, and then I'm like, oh, I've already done that. I can't remember. And then I'm going to go through all, like, 20-odd videos. No, not... Oh, it's a new subject. Right, let's do this one. Okay. Um, Kim. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. I'm back. She's killing herself. Kim, how do people find you? You can find me on Twitter, at Kim Schivler, or find me at whitegloveweptraining.com. All right. And how you can find me, folks, it's really easy. You can get me on my own Twitter channel, Twitter, at Jonathan Denwood, or you can email me at jonathan at wp-tonic.com, or you can go to the word, our Facebook page. I was going to say WordPress, our Facebook page with WP Tonic. It's been an interesting show. I'd um, like to say that most of the panel have done a runner off the Labour weekend, but um, I think we rustled up something of interest. There's great news stories. And hopefully next week, the children will be back in full force. <laughs> and uh, we'll have a great show. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. Bye. Adios.